We've had two videos now on quantum physics. In the first one, we deconstructed the idea of a particle as an infinitesimal dot and treating it as a wave with one particle's worth of information, which interacts with other particle waves only in discrete amounts. Next, we looked at how waves can have more than one particle's worth of information, leading to a phenomenon called quantum entanglement. Now it's time to get to the real meat of quantum physics. The part that makes people say, no one understands quantum physics. It's interpretations. What does quantum physics mean for the foundations of reality? Even when it's explained at its best, quantum physics is not easy to understand. But some of you might have picked up on something sketchy in the previous two videos. When a particle wave interacts, there must be another particle wave for it to interact with. So what determines whether the wave function collapses or whether the two wave functions become one and the particles become entangled? And the answer is, no one knows. When we take a measurement, the measuring instrument shows us one result or another it doesn't show us a superposition of both. But the instrument is made of particles, and for that matter, so is the scientist doing the observing. So why isn't the scientist put into a superposition of seeing this result and that result? This is known as the measurement problem, and it's the central mystery of quantum physics that is yet to be resolved. But just because we don't know the answer doesn't mean we lack for explanations. If you look up interpretations of quantum physics on Wikipedia, you'll find a long list. But many of these are variations on the same ideas, and they boil down to four. Two main contenders, and two tagalongs. Let's start with the Copenhagen interpretation. Now there's no standard canon for what the Copenhagen interpretation really means, so you might say that I'm actually saying this interpretation or that interpretation. But in my reading, the Copenhagen interpretation says, let's take the results of the experiment to their ultimate conclusions. So, looking at situations where the wave function collapses, what do they all have in common? And what they have in common is when the information in superposition stops being contained. If a small group of particles interact with each other, that information doesn't leak out into the greater universe, and those particles are entangled with one another. But when those particles are measured by a measuring device, that information goes into the molecules of the measuring device, it goes into the molecules of the air, into the light that interacts with the device in the air, and there's no way to capture that information and stop it from spreading to the rest of the universe. That's what causes the wave function to collapse under the Copenhagen interpretation. This, by the way, is why Schrodinger's cat would never work as an experiment. The idea is if we put a cat in a box and close the lid, and inside the box there's a vial of poison connected to a quantum event, then that cat will be in a superposition of alive and dead at the same time until we open the box and look at it. The reason this doesn't work is because when the cat's alive, it's breathing, and that breathing affects the motions of the molecules of the air inside the box, which affects the motions of the molecules that make up the box, which affects the motions of the air molecules outside the box. So even if we can't tell by looking at it whether the cat's alive or dead inside the box, that physical information has gotten out of the box and has interacted with our particles, and therefore there is an answer before we open the box. The other main contender is the universal wave function. It says, what if every interaction causes entanglement, whether it's between two particles or a particle, a measuring device, a scientist, and the rest of the universe? If that were the case, then the measuring device would show a superposition of results, and the scientist would be put in a superposition of seeing this result versus that result. In other words, as the information spreads to the rest of the universe, the whole universe becomes in superposition. And we, inside that universe, would see it as two parallel universes. This means that any particle interaction that causes information to propagate to the rest of the universe would split the universe in two in a bubble expanding at the speed of light. These results lead to the universal wave function's more commonly known name, many worlds. Now you might say, 
That's crazy. Why would you propose a multiverse to answer a question about measurement? Wouldn't Occam's razor say that's ridiculous? Not so fast. The multiverse is not an assumption, it's a conclusion. The assumption is to suppose that the Schrodinger equation is the end of the story and there's only one wave function, the wave function of the universe. Whereas Copenhagen says, let's take the results of the experiment to their ultimate conclusion, Many Worlds says, let's take the math to its ultimate conclusion. As far as Occam's razor is concerned, these are equally valid. Now to the tagalongs. Pilot wave theory suggests that particles are in fact infinitesimal dots that are carried along by their waves like surfers. These dot particles don't worry about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Even though their exact position and momenta can never be measured, they still exist and are therefore called hidden variables. The problem with pilot wave theory is it still has a wave function that has to collapse. So to me, it just seems like adding epicycles to epicycles in order to stick to our old notions of particles as infinitesimal dots with definite properties. It's just Copenhagen plus more assumptions. And last, we have consciousness collapse, which hypothesizes that wave functions collapse when the results are observed by conscious observers. This is spooky and gets our spiritual senses tingling, but as far as scientific hypotheses go, it's pretty arbitrary. Spooky 1 plus spooky 2 does not equal an explanation, and it seems to me like an attempt to rationalize the old philosophical concept of idealism, whose modern version is called phenomenalism, which says things don't exist unless they're being observed or otherwise affecting a conscious observer. Man, we'll stop at nothing to make ourselves feel like it's all about us. There is a concept called social reality, which is made up of our beliefs, perceptions, and cultural stories, but that is different from physical reality, and we should never confuse the two. And I should mention that Copenhagen is technically vague and overlaps with conscious collapse, but I decided to draw a line between them for this video. So we ultimately have two main contenders, Copenhagen, which takes the results of the experiment to their ultimate conclusions, and Many Worlds, which takes the math to its ultimate conclusion. However, although they both solve the measurement problem, they both introduce their own new problems. For Copenhagen, how does the information know when it's crossed the threshold of containment to trigger a collapse? The answer might lie in quantum decoherence, when the different parts of the wave function become so noisy that they can no longer interact with each other. For many worlds, why can we know the probabilities of what results will be beforehand? In instances when there are two possibilities, and thus the universe splits in two, why aren't they always 50-50? Why are they sometimes 90-10 or 60-40? One possible answer is that there are a finite number of universes, and the probabilities reflect the ratio of how many universes will be left in each of the branches. Or maybe, if there are an infinite number of universes, then every time the universe splits, there are an infinite number of universes in each branch, and the probabilities are what we get when we take the limit of the ratio of the number of universes as that number goes to infinity. That one makes my head hurt. Whatever the correct interpretation of quantum physics is, it has major implications for the nature of reality. It may be that the idea of a single world one day goes the way of the flat earth or absolute time. Perhaps one day we'll be able to do experiments that determine the answer to the question once and for all, or at least push the boundaries of our knowledge to new questions. For now, quantum physics remains mysterious, but hopefully you've seen that it's not mysterious in a we have absolutely no idea what we're talking about way, but in a very specific way that scientists continue to research and theorize about. Thanks for watching an infinite number of times, and thanks for subscribing and supporting me on Patreon in at least one of those universes. I'll see you next time.